Father James, again here, Berean Sovereign Grace, to share understanding of the matters of eternity, the matters of your judgment, the matters of salvation, the matters of reconciliation with the holy and righteous God, the matter of your meeting with him, whether in peace or in condemnation. And so I determined to do a series of messages and this is going to be titled Gospel Fundamentals. Gospel Fundamentals. It's very, very important that we understand the fundamentals of the gospel of Christ Jesus. And this particular edition, this particular installment will speak to the condition and nature of man. The condition and nature of man. And for our beginning, we're going to be in Romans 3. Verse 9 to 12, I think it is. Verse 9 to 12, Apostle Paul says, What then? Are we better than they? Are we better than the Gentiles with all their foolishness? Apostle Paul speaking on behalf of the Jews as a Jew who were under the law, and saying, okay, the Jews have been under the law and they think they have righteousness and they think they are better than everybody else, the Gentiles who are not under the law. But Paul says, no, that's not true. Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have already charged that both Jews and Greeks are all under sin. So that's the common bond among all men or are under sin by nature. As it is written, there's none righteous, not even one. There's none who understands. There's none who seeks for God. All have turned aside together. They've become useless. They've become unprofitable. There's none who does good. There's not even one. That's a wonderful testimony that speaks to the condition of all men and women in Adam as God sees them. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I felt compelled and hopefully by the Lord's leading to work on some gospel teaching so as to share understanding of the fundamental building blocks the foundational pillars of the gospel of Christ Jesus and why the gospel is called the gospel. What really is the good news in this matter? So this effort, this small effort is towards your salvation and edification. And that means growth in the knowledge of Christ and your assurance of salvation. Because you have an appointment with God. You and I have an appointment with God. And so we have to know how to approach him. We have to know. We can't just hope for the best. We can't just preach people into heaven like many are fond of doing. Just salvation by death. As long as you die, you're going to go to heaven. That's false teaching. For there are many... Churches, there are many doctrines. There are as many doctrines as you find many churches, many gospels. But there's only one true Christ. There's only one way. There's only one truth. Therefore, there's one gospel that is unto your salvation. There's only one spirit that testifies of this truth. One baptism, as Paul said, one Lord, one calling, one faith. Here, what Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 6, 16 to 17, he says, Thus says the Lord, 
stand in the ways and see and ask for the odd paths where the good way is and walk in it. Then you find rest for your souls. But they said we will not walk in it. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, Listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not listen. We will not listen. The odd parts, the good way of God's salvation by Christ and by faith alone. And God says, Walk in it. That's the safe way. And what happens? You will find rest for your souls. You will find rest from your laboring to try and be righteous, try and be accepted by God. We are the young and the restless. Still remember the show? The shop, the young and the restless. And apart from us knowing and believing the good way and walking in it, we shall not find rest. We shall not find rest. And God has appointed his watchmen over you to declare the truth of God's salvation. Salvation apart from works of the flesh. And God says, listen, listen to the sound of the trumpet. Listen to the preaching of the truth of Christ. But what do people say? We will not listen. We will not listen. We will rather listen to the traditions of our church, to the traditions of men. We would rather set New Year's resolutions to become better people, to become more righteous, but we don't listen to the good way. Beloved, if we do not listen to God's truth, we shall continue to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We shall come to God and begin to speak for ourselves. Speaking in ignorance, not knowing the proper way of approach which is in Christ Jesus. So having said that, so having said that, I want to urge you to not be followers of man, not of any man, not myself, but of Christ. Don't follow me, I can't save you. Look at my hands. There are no nails card hands. No nails in these hands. So do not follow me, follow Christ. Because it is our natural tendency to want to follow man. But we have to repent from that tendency. Because that is going to lead you into paths of perdition. The broad way that leads to destruction. When we expose a preacher a popular preacher even, and say, well, he's not telling the truth on Christ. The followers of men will go and defend the men, but they won't defend the honor of Christ. Here, Mr. someone, I am in this business to declare the honor of Christ, the dignity of Christ, the work of Christ, as he perfectly redeemed his people to the Father. That's all I'm here to do. That's my interest. That's my job description, to declare the things of Christ, and that for free. If you follow a person, follow a man without proper gospel knowledge, you vacuum up their foolishness without even knowing it because deception is very subtle so keep testing all things 
by the scriptures. And praying for understanding, you have to pray. You have to pray to God to give you understanding of the scriptures and the discernment. So don't just be interested in people because they say Jesus or because they said grace or because they say they go to church. Okay? Don't do that. So I pray that this effort will help you to be wise and to salvation. That is the whole matter of this gospel. This is not about raising your children. This is not about raising your children. This is not about rescuing the country. You cannot rescue America. Christ was not given to rescue a country. Christ was given to redeem a people that were given him by the Father. A people from every people, tongue, tribe, and nation. That's what the Christ was given to do. All this other business is playing gimmicks with the person and work of Christ. You are not doing anything for Jesus. That's not the gospel. Christ is the one who did things for you and me. If you believe, he made us holy and righteous before God. He made us accepted in himself. So we need to have discernment in our hearing. We need to have discernment. We need to be able to pay attention to what is being said. I preach, I teach a lot of wonderful gospel things from the Lord. And people don't want to listen. And the reason they have nothing to do with the truth. <laughs> they have nothing to do with the truth. They just don't like the way that I sound. Maybe I don't care. But I'm telling the truth. And God was pleased to give me the truth to declare it. So for us to understand the gospel, or what God is calling the gospel, we have to appreciate the nature and state of man in the wake of their fall in Adam. And it doesn't matter if one believes Adam existed or not. It doesn't matter the fact that they get sick and die is God's testimony of that truth. Because through the one man, sin came and all died because all sinned in him. Adam represented all of humanity. So it doesn't matter whether you believe that. You may say, oh, I believe in evolution. But if you die, if you get sick, then you were born in Adam. All men are born in sin because in Adam all sinned and died. That's Romans 5 teaching. Okay? So that means all men are born condemned in Adam. And of course, we have the gospel testimony of God's relationship to the elect, which Meta will continue to expound as we do this gospel fundamentals. And my point is, sin is a universal problem and affects every person who has ever been born of a woman except Christ Jesus, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Christ Jesus was not born in Adam, he is the new head of his new creation, the church, that is outside of Adam. So whether Jew or Gentile, we all were born under the same condition, under the same spiritual condition. As Romans 3, 10 says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not even one, there's none who understands. There's none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. All have gone astray. Together they become unprofitable. They become useless. There's none who does good. There's not even one. When did you last hear that from your church? Because you can preach the gospel if you don't know this. And this 
Paul was quoting from Psalm 14, verse 1 to 3. And this, my friends, is the spiritual condition of all men before God. Before God, this is how God sees you, apart from Christ. Outside of Christ, this is who you are. You are unprofitable. You do not seek after God. There's none righteous and none who can be righteous. Not even one. There's none righteous. There's not a single person. And that means there's no one who's doing the law. Because of sin, we have all become useless. Because none does good. No, not one. Even the sweetest and nicest people do not do good. As far as God is concerned. God alone is good. And what he says alone is what matters. A sinner cannot do good. Acts of charity and kindness are not the goodness of what God considers good. And apart from God convincing a person of this truth, they will get very offended to come and say, Oh, ma'am, I love your dress. You're looking so good. You smell good, but you're wicked. <laughs> Let's see how that turns out. But the truth of the matter is that even the seemingly righteous people are nothing better than whitewashed tombs who, in the words of Jesus, are full of all uncleanness and dead men's bones. Okay? So sin is what we are, and so we are, and so we are sinners because of what we are by nature. Not because of what we do or do not do. We sin because we are sinners. We are constituted that way. And this is what it means to be dead in trespasses and sins. That is what it means to be totally depraved. Being dead spiritually does not mean that you can't look nice and cute in your new clothes and shoes. Yes, of course, you can look nice and cute. Even the most beautiful people on planet Earth, they are dead in trespasses and sins if God has not granted them a new birth in Christ. And by this we are saying, you have no natural spiritual ability or capacity or power to come to God. If you're dead, you have no ability. You have no sense of who God is and what he requires. No sense of what sin is. No sense of true righteousness. No sense of what the law actually demands. You have no idea that you need salvation and that you can't do anything about it and are unwilling to do anything about it, even if you knew. Why? Because dead men do not take medicine. Dead men do not take ibuprofen or Tylenol for a headache unless they've been made alive. And it takes God to make you spiritually alive and to believe his testimony about yourself, about yourself, about him, about his Christ, about his way of salvation. But this is how God sees us in all men outside of Christ. There's none who is in their coffin who has one hand outside their spiritual coffin, 
waving for help and saying, help me, help me. Before they bury me, help me. No, that person cannot be found anywhere. A corpse who waves for help is not dead. <laughs> they are alive. If you are waving for help, you are not dead. But God says, spiritually we are dead, which means we have no ability whatsoever to lift a finger and see Jesus, believe in Jesus, make Jesus anything. And because of that, we find ourselves unable to do good and our best works of righteousness, God calls filthy rags and actually menstrual rags. Isaiah 64 verse 6. So God does not mince his words when he is speaking. He does not play nice to play nice. Therefore, when we see the stories of healing in the Bible, especially the New Testament, we should learn that they were not given for us to have healing and deliverance ministries. Rather, those physical health conditions, even the demon possessions, were depictions of spiritual realities, of our condition as the fallen in Adam. This is what we have become because of Adam. We have become the blind. We have become the mute. We have leprosy. So we hear this story in Mark 5, verse 12, of the man who was full of leprosy. Mark says, And it happened when he was in a certain city, that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. And he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Lord, if you are willing. You can make me clean. What are we to draw? Leprosy is a type or picture of sin. And God is saying a sinner is he or she who is completely covered in sin. Not just some boo-boos. Not just some freckles, some acne, some pimple here and there. Because Christ does not heal those who have partial sin or partial leprosy, but only those who are completely covered in leprosy, complete sinners, because Christ is not a half savior, but a complete savior, who is complete in himself and we are complete in him. And it is these alone who see Jesus in their need of healing. And when they come to him, they do not talk about their abilities. They don't talk about their choice, their decision, their will, their whatever. They bring the testimony, the simple testimony and say to Jesus, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean, Lord, if you are willing, you can save me. You can make me righteous. And that is acknowledging that healing, which is salvation, cannot be forced on Jesus. Cannot be imposed on Jesus. It is his prerogative. It is his sovereign right to give it or deny it. It is not about your willingness to be saved that causes salvation, but his willing, his grace, his sovereign grace and mercy. And it is by his willing. And that is why 
Salvation is by grace alone. Because you can't help your own leprosy. You can't help your own sin. If he does not will your salvation, there's nothing that you and I can do to cause it, to force it. Not through some prayer, not some repeating after some prayer, the jaw or stain way. Not even getting dunged in water, not walking in an aisle, that causes nothing. So all those who know their true spiritual condition is full of leprosy, covered from head to toe, to the toes, a sinner in every way, a sinner in your thinking, a sinner in your handling of things, a sinner in your walking, covered completely in leprosy. The complete sin sinner, when they come to Christ, they only speak the language of grace and grace alone in salvation. And it is the work of God, the Holy Spirit, for one to come to the knowledge that they are full of leprosy. God has to cause that. Otherwise, you're thinking you're a righteous person, like many claim. You cannot self-generate that testimony of being full of leprosy. Naturally, we want to use some foundation cream to cover our own blemishes so that we feel good. We want to sow our own fig leaves of righteousness as what our first parents, Adam and Eve, did in the garden. And the fig leaf garment factory is always hiring. It doesn't close even when there's a COVID lockdown. It is one factory that is recession proof always stitching garments. But that just proves our total depravity, seeking to approach God based on the works of our own hands. That free will garment factory only goes out of business once and when one has been born again of God and brought to the true knowledge of salvation. That's the only way to close down that factory. Unless a person is born of God, they'll still come and talk about what they have done. Remember the Pharisee in Luke 18, God, I thank you, I'm not like other men. Extortioners, adulterers, murderers, I tithe everything that I have. I'm not even like this tax collector. He was an employee of the fig leaf garment factory. And the tax collector, born of God, been fired from the fig leaf garment factory, came and said, God be merciful to me, the sinner that I am. Be merciful, be propitious to me. Two kinds of men, two kinds of testimonies. In conclusion, all men and women born in Adam are born sinners, born dead in trespasses and sins and under condemnation. And being born in this state, they are powerless to do anything about their situation and are powerless to come to Christ, powerless to do the law. You see, many claim ability to do the law. Even after they have come to Christ because they do not know or appreciate what kind of people they are still. 
They do not see how much leprosy covers them from head to the toes. The law cannot be done by one who has leprosy. Or it condemns them as unclean. It calls them to go about shouting, unclean, unclean, unclean. Dear brother and sister, has God shown you the matter of your leprosy? The testimony of your inability? Has he shown you your blindness? Your deafness? Because we can't talk about the good news unless men and women also understand of who they are and of what God requires of salvation and show them their resume that it is not good at all. Your resume and mine will take us to prison 100% of the time and never to come out. It will leave us in the cemetery and never to rise unless God gives us the resume of Christ, the CV of Christ Jesus. So we need to understand that, that naturally we have no ability. There's no, I chose Jesus, I decide to reject, I do all these things. There's nothing like that. That's all for staging. And so with that in mind, next we'll talk about the law of God and what it means in the context of salvation of one who has leprosy. But fundamentally we are doing all this laboring so that we can answer the salvation question. We are trying to get you somewhere to the question of justification to the question of how do such a one who has leprosy become righteous before God? That is the question of justification. And that question is saying, how shall a sinner approach one who is holy and righteous and not die? So when a preacher comes and they're telling you to look to yourself, to answer this question, they don't know what they're talking about. I don't care how big their ministry is. I don't care if you call them reformed. It means nothing because they failed to answer the question. They don't understand the question. The question is about your justification. If we do not understand justification, we are of all men the most miserable. And our religion is nothing but a warm embrace with death and condemnation. Going to church is not salvation because many people put a lot of stock in that. Answering God's way is what it means to, make, to be made wise and to salvation. Answering this question in the manner in which God has answered it in Christ Jesus. And that's what the matter of faithful gospel preaching is. Giving the understanding of how God has settled the matter in Christ. And so we shall judge a preacher or a pastor based on what they say about this doctrine and whether or not it is in keeping with the way that God has answered it. Because there's no one who has any righteousness of their own. There's not a single person who's profitable on their own. If you're not standing on the imputed righteousness of Christ, you will not see Beulah land, you will not see the shores of heaven. So forget that you are a good person. Forget what grandma and grandpa told you when you're growing up and it got into your head and you still think you're a nice person. 
Being nice, being nice is not the righteousness. Being a very kind person is not the righteousness. We have to go back to the fundamentals of the gospel. You are born dead in trespasses and sins. And unless God makes us alive by his spirit, we remain dead. And that is the natural condition of all men. Okay? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.